A new beta was quietly added recently, and it's big. FPS is up by up to 33% on both Windows and Linux. TF2 is upgrading to 64-bit, which means three things. First, memory alignment. If we store data right next to each other, grabbing data could require reading multiple addresses. If we pad memory, just one instead. So now, we align data to minimize reading. Packing memory was okay on 32-bit since you had 4GB of RAM at most. But 64-bit increases the absolute limit from 4GB to 16 exabytes, so it's better to spread out for faster reads. 2. Better compiler. We write code in English, but computers only understand ones and zeros. A compiler translates code into what the computer can use. Upgrading to 64-bit means a newer compiler, specifically SSE2, which has improvements for simultaneous math operations, so the compiler translates down to the computer better than before. And third, the CPU now gets more, bigger general-purpose registers. These are temporary storage spaces for mid-calculation data, like inventory slots. If you were making a lectern with two slots, it'd be super cumbersome, swapping back and forth with RAM. Having more slots and bigger slots make a huge difference for complex math with lots of variables. All that culminates into higher FPS. Limited sample size, but on a 100-player benchmark, Linux, at minimum, got a 12% bump. Or on average, 21.9%, regardless of Intel, AMD, or NVIDIA CPUs and graphics cards. An RX 580 from 6 years ago and an RX 6400 both got 23.8%. Someone has a 1050 Ti from 8 years ago, and they got 22.8%. We also benchmarked 24 players, and same story, 13-29%, to average 22.9%. For Windows, it's 12-32%, to average 19%, including the new option to use Vulkan graphics rendering instead of DX9, which seems to be about the same. At most, a 3% difference in average FPS. But one exception. There is a guy with a top-tier AMD system who somehow got 20% better performance on Vulkan, across 5 runs on each configuration. And 24 players on Windows, 14-26%. Average 18.7%. 4% difference versus Vulkan. So 64-bit, pretty good. The update is seemingly pretty done, so it shouldn't be long before we get it. The beta progressed super fast. It was created with a password on January 19th made public on the 23rd, and 64-bit TF2 on Windows on February 3rd. In that time, a lot of bugs were fixed, such as the Medic Scottish Resistance bug, and a crash if you load Mega Crazy Car. Since 64-bit ups memory address space by 4 billion times, TF2 will stop crashing when it hits 4GB of RAM usage now. This was that texture quality error. It's also a problem with the 100 player server. Over time, the server slowly collects memory leaks. To avoid reaching 4GB and dying midday, we restart every morning. The beta right now has a notable HUD fix for the player model that is amazingly taxing. I did 20 benchmarks, and this feature single-handedly kills 2 average FPS. Linux got emoji support in the beta, 
but Windows can't get it because of issues with how TF2 renders text, though upping the object limit is apparently being considered later down the line. TF2 somehow benefits more from 64-bit than even other source games. In 2016, CSGO Linux was updated to 64-bit, and going back to benchmark the before and after, performance literally doesn't change. Same with Gmod's 64-bit upgrade, 8% difference. Oh, and most importantly, the EXE got renamed, so we're no longer HL2.EXE. Team Fortress 2 actually got more of it.